Hi, welcome to today's program. My name is Vincent Simone, and I used to dread being at the net. Out of all the people who were the most afraid of hitting a volley, I was the most notorious. The reason being, I didn't know how to do it properly. So today I'm gonna to show you what I learned to stop hitting weak volleys and start winning more points at the net. Let's begin. You will never hit powerful volleys if you don't follow the next steps that I'm about to show you. And the first thing that you need to get down pat is swinging your feet before your hands. This may sound like a weird concept, but let me explain what this is and why it's beneficial. On the volley, most of us swing the hands first. And what this causes to do is break your impenetrable shield, which should be a brick wall. And the reason being that we don't want a lot of arm movement on the volley is because you're at the net. In fact, you're usually standing right on top of the net and there is no time to have a big swing. So what you wanna do is square the strings with the incoming ball, but you don't wanna do this just by moving the arm. You wanna get low and athletic and turn your body as a unit to square your strings to the incoming ball. And this will be a much more effective method of starting to get power on your volleys. But now there is another step. Once we create our firm brick wall, we wanna make sure that the butt of the racket is lined up with our belly button. And if you notice, the racket doesn't even move. And on the forehand volley, we also don't change the grip. What you wanna do is pivot your toes, your hips and your chest, and the racket should stay in the same position. It should be upright and firm, and your wrist should be back and fixed, and your elbow should be slightly bent, okay? And you'll know if you're taking the racket too far back, if your butt of your racket leaves this imaginary line with your belly button, okay? You wanna pretend that there's a brick wall behind us, and if we take our racket back any further than this point, we're gonna hit that brick wall, and it's gonna cause resistance when you're hitting the shot. And what it's really gonna cause you to do is hit late and behind your body, which is an automatic thing that's gonna cause you to hit a weak volley. So once we've built our impenetrable setup and our bulletproof volley wall, you're gonna to wanna to take the third step and start the swing with the feet. At this point, we also need to be sideways and the racket should be in line with our belly button, which means that our chest is also gonna be here as well. And a lot of people, they take the next step by not moving their legs first and they go like this. They open the chest and they swing the arm. And what this is actually gonna cause you to do is frame or shank the volley. It's gonna make an unclean sound almost every time. But we want, what we want to do is feel like we catch the ball. And you've squared your strings to the incoming ball, right? The ball leaves the opponent's racket. We split step and square the strings to the incoming ball. and make sure that you are not setting the strings in the same spot every time. Because setting up here for a ball that's up here is an extra movement and there's no time to go from here, right? Point A and point B is there. We're not gonna go A, A and a half, B. We wanna go from A to B, okay? So once you're here, you're gonna stay sideways and we're gonna pretend that the incoming ball is at my shoulders. We've squared the strings and now we're gonna implement the footwork. And for this step, it needs to be done a certain way or else it's never gonna work. And your rhythm needs to go like this. When you turn to the right for a right-handed player, we turn and pivot the right foot, okay? If the ball's farther away from you, you're gonna take a bigger step for your unit turn. And if it's close by, then you can just pivot the hips, okay? And once we get this pivot or this step, it's gonna be right foot, and left foot. And if you notice, the racket doesn't move and neither does my chest. Everything stays so stable and there is minimal to no racket head movement because like I said, we need to create a brick wall that's gonna allow us to stick the volley firm. Your opponent is giving you enough power in almost every instance that you don't need to even add a follow through at all. And it should really just feel like you are catching the ball in the middle of your strings. A lot of people in the follow through, they make this mistake. Cup, they slice, they hit what I refer to as fruit ninja volleys. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to end up hitting half of the ball instead of sticking with it and creating a firm popping effect. Okay. And just to go over the footwork again, just so you get it engraved in your head, it's right foot and left foot. Okay. And we step out directly out in front. Now, another thing that I need to go over for the forehand is when you swing, make sure you keep the wrist up. Don't let it drop at all. Okay. Because this is going to cause you to tuck the elbow in and open up the racket face and your volley is going to fly up and kind of float in the air for your opponent to put away the next shot. Now, let me show you how to get more power on the backhand volley, but it's very similar to the concepts that we just covered. So I'll quickly go over it. So for the backhand volley, we do actually change the grip. I'm not going to be going over that in this video for the sake of time, but we would square the strings to the incoming ball and it's a grip change and a unit turn and the butt of the racket stays in line with my belly button. So we square the strings and you want to make sure quick tip that your left elbow is up here. I don't teach two handed backhand volleys, by the way, we always hit, uh, you know, one handed backhand volleys in modern tennis. And we keep this up because watch what happens if the elbow drops. My strings are open and my volley is going to be weak and I'm going to send it up and it's going to be a floater and the opponent's going to put away the next shot. So create your firm brick wall with a solid foundation of the elbow staying up and supporting the racket. So the racket and the wrist is upright in this position. And from here, it's left foot, right foot. And if you notice, my racket did not move at all. And I also stayed sideways. And again, we set up at the height of the ball. A low volley would look like this. Boom, boom. A high volley would look like this. Boom, boom. Learning modern volley technique is the first step in creating a game that's really successful. And next, after this step, you want to go learn modern tennis. And I have a complete guide. It's an online course called Modern Tennis Step by Step. And if you like what you learned here, you should go into that next because it takes what I've taught you and what you've learned and it builds on it and shows you how to get power and consistency on the court forever. Once you've practiced this, you may want to take the next step and go study modern tennis. And you can get started today by clicking the link down below. In any event, thanks for tuning in and take what you've learned to modernize your game.